Hi, I'm Oliver. Welcome to another episode of AKG's Sounds from the Studio, the show where we provide you with pro recording studio tips used by engineers around the world. Today, we're going to discuss the AB stereo miking technique. This technique is most useful when you need a more spacious sound and when the acoustics of the room matter. It's great for recording group performances, choirs, and orchestras. Let's jump into it. Okay, so we're out in the live room with our two C414 XLS microphones, and we're gonna put them in an AB configuration. I usually like to use AB when recording drum kits like this, because you get a wider stereo image of the drum kit. If I was recording an acoustic guitar or something that is a little smaller, I'll usually use an XY, but for something wide like this where the drum kit is pretty big, I like to spread it out across the room and see what the different sides of the room have to offer. Now, we're in a pretty live room that's really ambient, so for this technique, I probably wouldn't go too far away because the further you get away from the drum kit, the more ambience you get. So I'd probably be about five or six feet back, place the microphones about here, starting in the mid section of the room, I can go down for more kick drum and snare and then up for more cymbals if needed. And then I would put this one looking at the other side of the drum kit, kind of angled in at about the same height. Now these two microphones are both in cardioid position. Uh, you can try different patterns, Omni, Figure 8, if you want more or less ambience. It really depends on the room that you're in at home. If you are in a smaller room, I would suggest trying to get them as far away from the drum kit as possible. I've even turned them around in the past, so it's just picking up the reflections of the drum kit. It really depends on the music that you're going for and the drum sound that you like. You can face them towards walls, you can put them in Omni, which will pick up more of the ambience of the room, but in this big room for me, I probably wouldn't go much further unless I had more mics set up and uh, I could kind of bring these in separately. You can also use a tape measure and measure from the drum kit. I usually go from the lip of the kick drum to the microphone and make sure they're both in phase with each other. But inherently, because the microphones are spread apart, each side is gonna sound a little different, which is great for a stereo mix because you kind of get a full picture of the drum kit. I would also suggest to use this technique with other microphones so you can bring in the room sound and then take it away if you don't need it. But they should sound pretty good on just this drum kit alone. Um, so let's bring in a drummer and see how it sounds. Okay, now let's take a listen to the space pair in front of our drum kit. All right, well, to me, that sounds like a really nice stereo picture of our drum kit. It feels very wide, and there's a ton of low end in there still as well as definition from all the different parts of the drum kit. The cymbals don't sound too harsh. The kick drum sounds nice and natural, and so does the snare drum. If I wanted more kick drum, I could bring the microphones down. If I wanted less kick drum, I could bring them up. It really depends on what kind of sound you're going for. But it also doesn't have too much or too little low end. I think if you start adding more microphones to this drum setup, you can get a fuller picture of the drum kit and a more modern sound. But I think this is a great place to start 
in a really nice kind of broad picture of our drum kit. It really sounds like you're standing in front of the drum kit in that room. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great tips from AKG's Sounds from the Studio. We'll see you next time.